Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8, 9, and 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hello, this is Brother Kevin, and this is Reformation and Revival Now. We're taking a look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. This is the bedrock for our faith, but it's also the bedrock for application. And we're going to get into the scripture today because I have a desire right now to begin to preach and begin to exhort in the way of revival. The name of this ministry is Reformation and Revival Now. And when God gave it to me, it was for that purpose, to deal with the roadblocks that hinder revival. And believe it or not, this scripture is very misunderstood. Where it should lead to revival, it very often doesn't. The way people apply it, they make it more about comfort. Now, before we get into this passage, I want to say when you're looking at scripture, if you want to properly interpret it, and I'm no scholar, but I'm just going to talk about being born again. When you look at the scripture, it has to be about God, not about you. If you make that mistake of making it about you, you will wrongly interpret all scripture because all scripture is looked at from God's context and not ours. So let's take a look at this scripture. It says, for by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Now see here, um, Paul is really saying that, okay, it's grace, it's unmerited favor because that's what the term grace means. So you're saved by this grace, but it's not of yourself. So he wants to make sure that you understand that you can't produce this salvation. You can't produce this grace. And then it says, um, and that now of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So he repeats himself. He is saying it is God's gift. And we don't boast because it's not of human effort. Now, I think that's very interesting. Paul, in that one passage, and we're going to go over all of it, said two times it's not of works it's not of yourselves please understand that foundation because i believe what we're dealing with now in the world in christendom or what's called christendom is false christianity stemming from a false grace you can't produce the grace that god has given to us you can't earn it you can't make it. You can't come up to where it is. God has to come down to us. And so Paul established that twice and really a short passage of scripture. And then he says, not of works, thus any man should boast. So you can't get into your thing because it's not your thing. It's the gift of God. But here is where most of us miss it. Because the scripture says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works for which God ordained or preordained that we should walk in them. Now, this passage is saying you're saved by grace through faith. OK, for the purpose of becoming his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. If you have the type of grace that doesn't produce fruit. You have a false grace, a false conversion. Because if you've received that grace, you are created for good works. No, not you doing the work, the grace that you've received. Jesus Christ coming into your life. When he comes into your life, he will produce a work. You are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So when you become saved by faith, by grace through faith, you receive Jesus coming into your life. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will place within you. When you receive that, that's not a human work. But like Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, You will keep my commandments and judgments to do them. This one says, You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Whoa. 
sounded like it's saying the same thing. So what we want to do, since we're talking about revival, we want to make sure that if you've received this grace, what is it producing in your life? This is what we call reformation. Don't misunderstand the scripture. Because it's saying that you have to produce by that same grace. Now we're going to take a break and I'm going to come back and we're going to break into another passage of scripture, which will clarify this even more so. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 14 for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that by denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in the present age looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works now as you can see this particular scripture in Titus is almost like an inversion of the one in Ephesians and it says that grace that appears to you or grace that you receive, once you receive it, it teaches you to live a holy life. Now, see, this is really fantastic because it's telling you that it's, it's producing something that the old law couldn't do. See, the law couldn't do, couldn't deal with things of the heart. It could give you sacraments and it could give you statutes and things like that and ceremonial things but it couldn't change the inside. But this scripture is saying, when this grace appears unto you, it's going to teach you, the grace is, it's going to teach you to live a holy and righteous life in this present world that you live in. Because you are preparing to receive Jesus as he comes and cracks the Eastern sky the second time. He wants to produce in us a people that are zealous for good works. I love that particular phrase. That means we're anxious to do the things that please God. And if you have received a grace that doesn't do this, it's a false grace. Because usually the way the grace scriptures are used, it's like, oh, don't worry about it. God will forgive you. You don't have to worry about it. He's got you covered. That's not the angle of a born again person. See, when you interpret the scriptures, as I said in the first half, you have to interpret it from God's point of view. You're getting everything. You're getting salvation. You're getting this. But it don't seem like God gets anything. But he does. He gets a holy people that will bring forth the good deeds and the good fruit that comes out of him. In other words, he shares something with his people. The same works. The same attitude. The same deeds. And if the grace and salvation that you have doesn't produce this it's false and why am i saying that it's because i am preaching now revival 
We need revival in the church. We need revival because we've made salvation all about eternal security, all about what's in it for us. We need to be secure in our salvation. I'm telling you the born again person is not concerned about that. He's concerned about how he's going to please his master, how he's going to please the bridegroom. That is what a born again person is concerned about. And any other attitude is false grace. Because you don't need legalism. See, we think that grace isn't legalism. The way we preach grace now, today, it's legalism. You just believe right and God's got you covered. No. Grace produces a brand new walk. You bear brand new fruit because you're rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. You are his workmanship. And you are his workmanship in Christ Jesus to make you zealous to bear fruit or bring forth good works. This is what's missing today. So we need a revival. I just want to say this before I close. If you're not bearing fruit, repent. If I'm not bearing fruit, I should repent. Because salvation to God looks like a new creation in Christ Jesus. His workmanship that we walk like Jesus walked. And without holiness, no man shall see God. But if we don't have this type of grace, we're not going to produce any holiness, but it should because it says that we should be zealous for good works because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Well, in this series, I'm going to go into reformation and revival, and I'm going to take these two scriptures and use them a lot. And we're going to get into how we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus and how the Holy Spirit teaches us to move in holiness and not just in holiness and righteousness, but how to obey the call of God in our lives to share our faith and to go into the nations, all nations and preach the gospel. Well, God bless you. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.